PepsiCo have come out and publicly stated what the efficiency is of the Tesla Semi. They've also provided some other interesting information. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. You're watching The Electric Viking. Welcome to the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Just want to say a big shout out. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. Really appreciate you guys. Could not do this channel without you. If you'd like to support us on Patreon, that would be awesome. I'll put a link in the description below. Now, if you'd like to see some of our videos a few days in advance as well, I'll put a link in the description and you can look at becoming a member of the channel. PepsiCo, they have 21 Tesla semi trucks. So they've quite got quite a big fleet. They've been using them now for a while and they use them at their bottling plant in Sacramento in California. Now you can imagine a truck, a semi truck loaded up with bottles of drink that would weigh a lot. However, in a video, the company produced some, well, provided some insights into the daily logistics routine with the all electric trucks, which many people say are garbage. They say they're rubbish. And there's a reason why diesel trucks are the best you've ever seen. Yeah, those really slow trucks. Now, one of the big advantages of the Tesla semis is they get into their locations quite a bit quicker than the diesel powered trucks. That's a significant advantage, but there are some other big advantages too. They're safer, much, much quieter, much easier to drive. Um, they're obviously automatic, it's electric. There's no revving the gears. There's no shifting through 27 diesel speeds in your diesel gearbox. Um, they can get up hills much quicker. Uh, you don't have to actually be concerned. Am I gonna get up that hill? Do I have to go really, really fast here or down this hill? There's heaps of advantages of these vehicles. Now, this is the first generation of Tesla Semi. The second generation will be much better. Imagine how good they're gonna be. In the video, which was produced by the North American Council for Freight Efficiency, or NACFE, only representatives of Pepsi Company and the local energy provider Sacramento Municipal Utility District are actually interviewed. There is no Tesla representatives that talk about the numbers. So these are just coming from Tesla and the official company that actually measures this information. The EV manufacturer has delivered only a small number of Tesla semis so far to PepsiCo. And they do have orders from lots of companies. Um, those companies obviously are still waiting for these vehicles. Tesla's still ramping production. That's going pretty slowly at this stage. But I do think Tesla is taking this very seriously because they can make a lot of money. 40,000 US dollars are the credits you get if you buy one of these semis. I think Tesla probably plans on making billions of dollars and I talked about how they're gonna do that with their semis, how they're gonna disrupt, disrupt this industry. This industry is so ripe for the picking, even more than gasoline, diesel powered commercial and, and passenger vehicles. This is gonna be even easier to disrupt for numerous reasons, some of those which I just mentioned. So. In April, Pepsi was the first company to present the electric truck as a fleet vehicle in its company design. Electriv says that Tesla started deliveries of the Semi at the beginning of December 2022, and the manufacturer itself has not provided an update on future deliveries to other companies. However, Tesla Mag says that with reference to a recall by the US authority NHTSA from June, PepsiCo probably received 36 of the 100 semis ordered so far. 15 are in operation at PepsiCo. 15 are in operation at subsidiary Frito-Lay in Modesto, California, and 21 in the primary location, the bottling factory in Sacramento. So the vehicles, the ones working at the bottling factory, the 21 there, Apparently, at that site, there is four Tesla mega chargers, all with a capacity of 750 kilowatt each. They allow charging to happen very, very quickly. Apparently, the batteries can charge to 80% in only 45 minutes. And the semi can charge from 5 to 10%, all the way up to 95% in only 20 to 30 minutes, which is absolutely amazing. I really would not have expected them to charge that quickly. PepsiCo uses 18 of the Tesla semis for deliveries within a 100 mile radius or about 161 kilometer radius. So obviously that means they drive that distance, say 160 kilometers or 100 miles, and then they drive back. 
and then they charge them. So they don't need to charge them at any point during the drive. Apparently they do multiple stops though in shifts of up to 12 hours. According to Amanda DeVoe, Transformation and Strategy Director at Pepsi, using electric vehicles for these short trips between the company's bottling warehouse in Sacramento and delivery locations is very useful. However, according to Dejan Antunovic, head of the electrification program at PepsiCo, the remaining three units will definitely be used for long distance, meaning 250 to 450 miles or around 400 to 725 kilometer trips. Tesla officially says the electric truck has a range of 500 miles or 800 kilometers when fully loaded. But that was what they officially said before the, basically before the truck was revealed and delivered and Tesla haven't confirmed range since then. But we have heard some drivers of these trucks say that they've been able to do 450 miles in the real world with the truck. So what is the actual efficiency? Well, first of all, the efficiency is improved by Tesla's regen. So if you buy an EV, regen will affect the amount of kilometers of range that you get in most driving. Of course, when you use the brakes, if you use the brakes more, you recharge the battery more. That's one thing that I didn't like about the EV that I bought, the BYD Addo 3. The regen was pretty weak. So I knew that sometimes I had to use the normal brakes. And when I was doing so, I simply was missing out on the opportunity to recharge my battery, of course. The regen braking on these vehicles is extremely powerful and adds a lot of energy back into the vehicle. Obviously, this is a big feature that you don't get with an internal combustion engine semi-truck. The program manager at Pepsi says that the vehicles achieve an average efficiency of 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile, with the Tesla Semi the equivalent of 1.1 kilowatt hours per kilometer. The Tesla website says less than two kilowatt hours per mile. So it seems as though they are achieving a much better efficiency than what Tesla is advertising here. Tesla is saying less than two, and it seems as though in many instances, it's as little as only one. The most important confirmed news though, on the occasion of the delivery start in winter, was that the battery can be charged up to one megawatt thanks to a 1000 volt charging system. Consequently, the charges with a maximum of 750 kilowatt would be the limiting factor at the charging facility, meaning it's possible. Once they install one megawatt charges, we can see even faster charging from these trucks, which would be amazing. So how many motors does a Tesla Semi have? It has three, a little bit like the Model S and Model X Plaid. Now, apparently it uses one for the most efficient constant speed and the other two for acceleration. What's the price? Well, we still don't know the price for the Tesla Semi. It probably depends on how many you order, um, what size battery pack you want. I'm gonna guess that there's probably different sizes though Tesla haven't confirmed that. It seems very likely though. And we also don't know the official battery capacity or the official performance of these vehicles, but we have seen them driving up a hill and they drive up hills pretty well. In fact, a lot better than gasoline powered vehicles. Tesla started production of the first vehicles back in October of 2022. In the US, the semi falls into the truck class eight with a gross vehicle weight of up to 80,000 pounds or around 36.3 tons. Electric trucks though can exceed this limit by another 2000 pounds. That translates to 37.2 tons. A few months ago, Tesla stated that it had demonstrated the 500 miles mentioned above with a fully loaded 82,000 pound semi. What I would guess though is, if you're driving a semi, you don't really want to run out of battery capacity. So Tesla probably drove it fully loaded and just drove it until it stopped. And they probably got 500 miles of range under those conditions. But we don't know when they fully loaded it, how much weight they had on board. But it's good to know that it can get these kinds of ranges, which are quite impressive. It's much more impressive than it sounds because all of the competition have trucks that can do around 250 miles or less. The main thing here that I took away from this was just the efficiency. The efficiency is quite a bit better than we all thought. And this is one area that Tesla and Hyundai, in fact, do very, very well at. Efficiency, getting the most out of the available battery pack size. And a lot of that comes to do with, down to do with the architecture the way the battery management system systems work, heat pumps work, 
how efficient the motors are, how that all ties in together. It's a system that I think Tesla's had a lot of years to master, and they've certainly done it with this Tesla Semi. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.